We want to hear your views about these videos, and we want to hear them now. You can phone us at 1-800-265-6824. Fax us at 416-591-6824. Get in touch with Too Much For Much. The audience, they are going to be giving us an instant reaction to the videos that they see. To explain quick tally, we have Mr. Neil State. Throughout the evening, we'll be asking questions of our interactive audience. They'll be responding on these, quick tally units. It has 12 keys, from 1 to 10, a yes, a no, and a slider down the side. Our computer will take all of their responses, and our audience at home will be able to see the response almost instantaneously. We'll be asking three varieties of questions. Yes or no questions, ranked questions from 1 to 10, and multiple choice questions. When we play the video, we'll be using the slider down the side. For example, if we played this, if you found it offensive, you'd push the slider all the way up. If you didn't find it offensive, you'd pull the slider all the way down. It's very important that you understand the question before using the quick tally unit. We start you off with one of the most controversial videos that you will see tonight. It is Body Thief by Faster Pussycat. Don't forget, we are conducting a straw poll out there. You have a 1-900 number to call. If your answer is yes, you do agree with banning Body Thief, call 1-900-273-1111. If you do not agree with the decision to ban Body Thief, call 1-900-273-2222. Don't forget, it's 50 cents a call. Before we roll the video, a little background to the band. Faster Pussycat are based out of Los Angeles. They take their name from a Russ Meyer soft porn movie entitled Faster Pussycat Kill Kill kill. Here is Body Thief by Faster Pussycat. Good old song, but what about those visuals? Let's see how the quick tally group reacted to that video. Neil? Thanks, Cam. Let's have a quick peek at uh, what our audience said about that last video. And if the camera can come up here, I'll quickly switch that across for you. And to there. Now you're seeing the graph. I'm slowly going to run through the whole thing for you. And uh, you'll be able to see if we're right in on top of that graph there. We're moving along, we're moving along. By about the one minute mark, everyone's around the four or five degree mark. They don't think there's anything really that bad about it. There's one spike we're going to see coming up here. We could get right to it. Bang, there it is. What we saw there was when the, uh, it seemed to be uh, a young girl was being dragged away by her feet. Uh, audience reaction to that was pretty negative. Uh, more than half the audience at that particular time, probably about 60% of our audience, had a problem with it there. Let's keep moving along. It drops down substantially, gets down to about 30% or so, and we keep boogieing along here. We're at about the two-minute mark. Once again, no big deal, no big deal. As we get a little later, we get a couple of hits here. Wasn't able to catch what was happening, but uh, clearly there was something that our audience really didn't like about it, and we're moving along, we're moving along. Coming up to the end, let me get to the end here, up to the four-minute mark. By the end, about 50%. So we weren't too bad. Uh, the audience is yes, no, yes, no. They really didn't have that much of a problem with it. There were a few specific points where, where they were moving the sliders uh, quite rapidly, but uh, that's our audience's opinion. Now what we're going to do, we're going to ask you at home to register your opinion by our phone and fax numbers, and here they are. We want to hear your views about these videos, and we want to hear them now. You can phone us at 1-800-265-6824. Fax us at 416-591-6824. Get in touch with Too Much For Much. Here's what the review committee had to say about Body Thief. Quote, this video shows the extreme on one end of exploring difficult issues. It's useful to see in a discussion context for that reason, but shouldn't be shown on much in rotation that is in our normal video flow. Another comment, it's the most sickening video I've seen in a long time. I despise the mixture of sexuality and violence and children. The editorial content is suspect. If they're trying to show that violence against kids is evil, then they're ambiguous at best and therefore, I think, unsuccessful at conveying a message. 
We're in the world famous Much Music Library. There's about 19 to 20,000 videos here. Before they get here and before they get into your home, they have to pass certain procedures. Here's a reminder of those procedures. <laughs> For those who want their video to play on Much Music, these are the people who decide if, when, and how often that video will be seen. This is the music committee. When making its decision, they consider the performer's notoriety, the quality of the video production, the quality of the song, the creativity and originality of the concept, and, very important, the impact that each video might have on the community standards of this nation. That means videos containing gratuitous violence or sex, unacceptable language, that which might encourage antisocial, illegal, or unacceptable behavior have to receive additional careful consideration. That's where the review committee comes in. These are everyday folks from various departments in the Chum City building who have different backgrounds but share a common interest in and a sensitivity to the community as a whole. <laughs> they view the videos in question and discuss their possible impact. And uh, does it stand up, and do you want it on the air or not? The decision of the review committee is final. Well, that's how Body Thief got banned from much music. Well, an individual that's a member of that review committee is sitting right here, and she's a familiar face to those of you who watch Too Much For Much, Sarah Crawford. Sarah, is that the consensus of uh, those uh, quotes you already heard? Is that the consensus of the review committee on that particular video? Not only of the review committee, but of our programmers as well. Um, this video is a strange one because it doesn't actually show any violent imagery per se in it. But we felt there was a really strong, implicit, um, violent feeling to the video. And the linking of violence to any kind of sexual behavior, especially to do with children, was abhorrent to all of the programmers here at Much Music. Well, uh, did they think that this might be acceptable in any kind of situation? Well, I don't, it'll be interesting to hear what the people who made the video have to say, because I can't imagine anyone made it to just present the life of someone who hurts children in that way that it's implied. Um, if their intent was to show something that's so horrible, um, they're hoping to discourage that kind of behavior. I don't know that they were su successful in doing that, and that's the impression that everybody here had. It went beyond community standards. Yeah, we felt it would be really offensive, and the context in which it was pre presented wasn't clear enough to merit showing it. We've always taken a really strong stand against violent material here, and we felt that this one crossed the line. Well, community standards are important. Someone that has done that for a living is Mr. Robert Payne, a broadcaster, and you served on the Ontario Board of Censorship, is that right? Uh, well, it's called the Ontario Film Review Board, but if you'd like to call it the Ontario Board of Censorship, that's fine too. <laughs> All right, so what did you think, in your professional opinion, of that particular video by Faster Pussycat? Well, uh, I, I don't even look at it in, in terms of my professional opinion. I, I sort of wonder what benefit is being served by banning that kind of video. If, for example, Much Music bans that video, and I can walk out of here and walk down the street, probably in any music store, pick up the video, Whose agenda is being served here? What 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 is the benefit to uh, anybody from banning? All right, sir. It, you raise a good point, but a broadcaster's mandate, as dictated by our regulatory body, the CRTC, says that we can't play anything that is gratuitously violent or that it would offend community standards. So we have a whole different set of rules as a broadcaster who is essentially licensing a channel um, to the public than say would a video store and probably all of our programmers here would never suggest that the video not be sold or not be enjoyed in the privacy of one's own home but just not be broadcast so one so one assumes sarah that eventually people will uh, re-examine those guidelines perhaps uh, uh as i say and i i don't want to be repetitive but whose whose agenda is being served and what is the benefit of doing this if uh if I can walk down the street and, and pick up the same video. Well, let me jump in there, because if you can walk down the street, it means that there is already some kind of bounds on what you gain access to. You have to physically walk down the street, you have to pay for it. Y it may be in an over-18 store, whereas if it's on TV, it's available at any time to anybody. It's an interesting question, though, because the regulator right now, um, prompted by response from the public, is, if anything, examining strengthening these guidelines and is even looking at imposing, instead of a self regulatory framework that broadcasters operate within is looking at imposing a um, sort of censorship 
um, by an outside body or a classification system as well on broadcasters. Which of course is also futile because as we know we're uh, just around the corner from a 300 uh, channel universe and uh, programs will be coming in from all parts of the world. Uh, all of us as individuals will have access to those programs, so uh, what we have, uh, if the CRTC goes ahead uh, with its proposed guidelines and its proposed anti-violence kinds of stance, uh, uh, you know, it will affect Canadian programming, but will not affect uh, anything about U.S. programming or programming that's coming from Sweden or programming that's coming from Tokyo. Or oh, all right, let me jump in there because we have the person responsible for making that video on the line right now. Her name is Elizabeth Bailey. She's the director of the video. Elizabeth? Yes. Are you there? Yes. All right. Are you able to hear the comments? Yeah, I mean, I feel, you know, frankly at a disadvantage because I've only heard smatterings of things. And, you know, my feelings about this piece are that it's a very, very serious piece. If you listen to the lyrics, it's a song about serial killing, which happens. And those images are powerful and disturbing, but there are things that we have to confront. And I don't think that anything was overt. It was all suggestive. And I think that that's what makes it the powerful piece and disturbing piece that it is. And I, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say because I feel, you know, I'm on a phone and I've heard blips and blurbs, but, you know, hey, I walk down the street and see nudie magazines in every magazine stand that I go on uh, or I watch clips on MTV that have you know women practically unclothed dancing in front of the camera and you know my feeling about that is I may or may not disagree with that but those those videos get played all the time and that's freedom of expression and what I'm kind of addressing here are serious unsettling issues which I felt I addressed in a very uh, artistic, serious way, you know, I mean, um, the, the week after I did this video, there was a huge article in, you know, the New York, all the New York magazines about a seven-year-old girl who was kept chained for, you know, four weeks in this underground prison, and this happens, and people have to confront this and, like, face up to it, and if it's, like, if it freaks them out, I'm not... I'm not promoting anything, I'm saying it's a cautionary tale. I mean, that was my point in doing this piece, it's, it's like a cautionary, sort of almost how innocence is okay. destroyed, and you know, I, I, I just don't agree with like what everyone is sort of saying. All right, we're going to go right now to the individual that heads up Warner Music Canada, Mr. Stan Kunin, that actually distributes Faster Pussycat material, but on this particular one, Stan, mm -hmm. was Faster Pussycat being distributed by yourselves at this particular time when this video came out? Well, yes, they, they were, and uh, in, this is a strange case, this particular video. This uh, Normally we get serviced out of the U.S. This video did not come to us from the U.S. It was brought to our attention by the people at much about a month after it should have arrived, requesting it, at which point we got a copy down to you. So this, uh, for some reason, was not serviced to us in a normal manner. But what about your opinion on controversial videos? Do you actually have a say in it? Well, it, it, we would have a say in it and something originating with a Canadian artist where we would be involved. But uh, I, I tend to, uh, uh, the philosophy is the, uh, the artist has the freedom to express themselves. And it's a, it's a very awkward thing. And I think to, uh, we have to point out the laws are a little different. There's a tendency for people to think that the uh, American law applies up here, but as you know, our, our Supreme Court has, has come down with a ruling. We're not quite sure what it means, but, but they have come down a uh, on a, a ruling on what constitutes uh, uh, material that shouldn't be distributed. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I mean, I don't even um, like understand that because, you know, we see videos every day that show women in a completely degrading, demeaning, position and this, and the second that you're faced with like a real a real social issue and something that's really scary and for real everyone like can't deal with it and recoils and I don't I, I, and you know I'm trying to say something really serious with my images here and they're powerful and that's why I think and they're supposed to be disturbing the song is about Ted Bundy 
William Gacy. I mean, people who are like sick individuals. And all right, Elizabeth, you know, let me interrupt you a minute. Would you prefer that I do a performance piece with a couple of girls in bikinis? All right. Well, here is what someone else in our audience thought about that particular video. We're going to take a commercial break. Here's a comment from our quick tally group. I'm Delilah Tunak, and I, I'm a nurse, and I found the video fairly negative, a lot of negative images in it, and uh, I'm not sure if, if, if uh, children watching this video would connect all the images, um, would understand all the symbolism involved, um, uh, and I think it's very dark and very disturbing. Send the money today, or your father and I couldn't be oh, washed away. When you need to send money to someone fast, come to Western Union. We'll make sure it gets to any of our over 19,000 locations across Canada, the U.S., or worldwide in minutes. I'm calling about your son, Grover. You better send money. His ski trip's over. Western Union, the fastest way to send money. With over 700 locations across Canada, call us for one near you. Not to the party? I'm not going. I'm babysitting my new friend. This tragedy could have been avoided with new Oxy Daily Face Wash. It's not a soap, it's an Oxy. It cleans and oxycutes acne causing bacteria and annihilates pimples, blackheads, and other unwelcoming visitors from the future. Oh, you worry that to the party? Oxycute them before you even get them with new Oxy. Oxycute them. You know how you always say you wish I had more friends? Hello, Mrs. Madigan. For anyone who's ever looked for adventure. I hate when that happens. Wanted a girl. What a cutie. And needed a friend. Jack! This hero stuff has its limits. Columbia Pictures presents... Come on! An adventure for the kid inside us all. Yes! Arnold Schwarzenegger, last action hero. The fun begins on Friday. Ah, hey! Come here! Guess what happens on Hedgehog Day? You mean Groundhog Day, moron? No, Hedgehog Day. Preview this. <laughs> Just a sneak preview, but much music and Sega Genesis are giving away three Sega Genesis Sonic systems, including a Sonic the Hedgehog game cartridge during each airing of the Sega sneak previews in the month of June. To answer, send your name and address to Hedgehog Day. Care of much music. Enter now to win. Next level. Welcome back to Too Much For Much. We're uh, talking about some of the harmful effects on videos. Now, essentially, we're all amateurs in terms of the effect of videos on people. You know, we all have a gut reaction, but what do the professionals actually think? Well, we have someone that can help us with that, Judith Stevens, from the Forensic Department at the Clark Institute of Psychiatry. Judith is the coordinator of the Relapse Prevention Clinic, and that is to help ensure that pedophiles and the like do not fall back into their ways. Is that correct, Judith? That's right. So what do you think the effect of this particular video would be on someone that uh, has that kind of problem? Well, um, as a group, uh, child molesters are extremely ashamed and defensive. They're very reluctant to admit that they have any problems, and most of them spend years uh, hiding out before they're finally discovered and come to us for some treatment. I think a child molester would react to that video depending where he was at in his own career. Um, I think people who are actively molesting kids would be turned on by it. I think it would be something that they would uh, see as very erotic and exciting. I think people who have started to look at the impact, individuals who have started to look at the impact of their child molesting on children, on their families, on themselves, would be ashamed. Um, and I think I'm trying to think if, if any child molester would see that as um, an opportunity for them to get help or, an or see it as, as someone trying to understand their situation, and I don't think so. I don't think so. You don't think? I don't think, I don't, 
I, I'm speculating, but I think a, a, a child molester or a pedophile watching that video, someone who was trying to control their behavior, someone who is trying to uh, live within societal boundaries, would find that video very upsetting. I think that they would find it um, exposing in only in a very unidimensional way. It shows the ugliness and the uh, fear and the harm. I don't know why no one mentioned the knife at the throat. Terrifying. All right, Elizabeth is still on the line. Elizabeth, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I am. Jump in. I don't know, because this is not the way we set up this interview, and I'm going on record saying this. This is an artistic, serious piece. And if other artists are involved in this discussion, besides psychiatrists and video promotion people and, and others that I cannot even hear what they're saying, it would be a realistic discussion, but it's not. And so what I want to go on the record before I get off and hang up and say is that I, I don't think that this I, I think that it says it's very telling about someone if they think that it encourages pedophilia and that's more from them than from me because to me this is a cautionary unsettling Hansel and Gretel tale about innocence being deceived and excuse what me, happens in the real world me, no 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 wait a minute Let but me we finish. have a professional I've listened, here I've listened for 20 minutes to your supposed experts commenting on my work who are like, I don't even know who these people are. And well, they're experts in their field, certainly. Oh, well, okay, good. I grant them that, but they're not artists, they're not filmmakers, they're not image makers. But we were trying and to find out the impact care, of no, your art. I don't even care if this, the whole point of this video was not whether it's broadcast to mainstream news. To me, that's an irrelevant unimportant point if it becomes something that 10 people see that it has an impact on people that it you know when i worked with this piece with my editor who has a seven and a four year old child he said this piece really scares me and it really makes me think about the real what the real world is like and it brings up issues and it throws them in your face and that was my intention on a twenty thousand dollar budget which is a very 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 small budget and that's besides the point, but those images are thoughtful and thought out, and they're not gratuitous, and they're not, you know, taking advantage of people, and they're like, what happens in the real world? Okay, Elizabeth, thanks. Hold on a minute. We're going to find now how the impact might uh, occur for young people. Susan Ruskin is from the Toronto Board of Education. What are your thoughts about that video, and what do you think young people seeing that video would react like? I think they would be very disturbed by it. Uh, to me, it implies an encouraging of solicitation of children. We are constantly having to educate kids about the hazards of people out there, the kinds of things that can happen, and I don't think that placing it in a context that normalizes that kind of behavior does anything to assist us in working with kids. Whether or not people want to watch something like this on their own, I personally wouldn't, but if they wanted to, I see no problem with that. You're making an informed choice. But if you're broadcasting it to a viewing audience that is a wide, wide range of ages, I think you do have to be careful about what you show. I'm disturbed by the violence. I'm disturbed by the solicitation of the children. Um, it, it does offend me. It makes our work with kids in the schools that much harder to do. We live with the impact of this stuff all the time. It's very hard. Okay, let's find out what Canada actually thought. We're going to go to the bar graph. We'll find out from a straw poll the results. Let's take a look at those results right now. There we go. Do you agree with the decision to ban Body Thief from Much Music? 47% said yes, 53% said no. So the majority of the people out there watching this program right now and voted believed that the video should not be banned. We're going to take a commercial break right now and have another response from our quick tally audience. See you in two. My name is Mary and I think while some of the scenes on their own might have been okay. I think altogether they implied violence 
and it it showed um, taking advantage of the innocence of children. So I, I was offended by the whole thing, really, because of what the whole thing implied. Hope we get rescued soon. This is our last pack. The original great taste of Juicy Fruit is now available in new sugar-free. Jack, check this out. Hey, it's Juicy Fruit. Hey, it's Juicy Fruit, Jack. Oh, we're going in. Plain. The one and only great taste, Juicy Fruit. Now available in new sugar-free. Taste that sticks out. I'm sure that at one time or another, most of you have wondered just what it's like to sit in these chairs and program the nation's music station. Well, here's your chance to be Moses. That's right, your chance to play God, or I mean programmer. No pesky broadcasting school fees, no clawing your way up the corporate ladder. All it takes is a simple fax, a phone call, or even an old-fashioned letter. Tell Moses what you like and what you don't like about much music. You know, sort of like a report card. Interact with us. We see you. We hear you. Welcome back to Too Much For Much. We're just about to see Vince Neal's latest video entitled Sister of Pain. Don't forget, though, you can vote. We've got a straw vote going right across the country. We're really intrigued to find out what you people think. If the answer is that you wish to see or you wish to agree with the decision to ban Sister of Pain, call 1-900-273-1111. If the answer is no, you don't think the video should be banned, call 1-900-273-2222. Don't forget, that's 50 cents a call. And we also have our responses for the Quick Tally group, and this time we're going to do something different. We're going to divide them by gender. Here's Neil State to tell us about it. Okay, Kim, what we're going to do here, we're going to split up our audience between male and female. So we're going to ask our audience members to pick up their quick tally unit and push one if they're male, two if they're female. So if they do that for us now, we'll register those, and it'll help us a little later on to divide the, the uh, our reaction among our male and female audience members. Okay, we've got all that now. It's a pretty good selection. I have that, and uh, let's go back upstairs to Kim. Okay, a little bit of background on Vince Neil. He was fired from the band Motley Crue. He was the lead singer for Motley Crue about a year ago. He was fired. This is his first solo effort. This is the single, the lead-off video single from the album Exposed. And you should note that there have been at least five edits of this particular video before MTV in the United States would actually play it. We are not playing it here on Much Music. Here's maybe why Vince Neil, Sister of Pain. <laughs>
Let's go to Neil's state right now to find out how our quick tally group reacted to that video. Neil? Okay, Kim, what we saw there is, uh, is pretty interesting. Come on over and I'll show you. It seems that uh, the majority of our viewers or of our audience members who are male uh, seem to be either really big fans of the band or uh, they had no problem at all with it. Let's move the graph along here. Now, as we see right off the top, uh, we have three lines. The yellow line at the top represents the female. The blue line right at the bottom, like at zero, 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 is the male audience members. And the overall, which is uh, a median between the two, is the red line. We're going to move it along here. We don't really see anything really happening. They seem to be pretty equal, equally spaced apart, so you know, there's nothing really happening. Except there. There's, there's spike number one, and that's where we see the scantily clad woman. We move along a little more, and hey, there's, there's some more scantily clad women, and of course the guys in our audience, uh, well, what can you say except that they really didn't have a problem with it. We keep moving along here. M female comes back down again. In other words, uh, we don't see the scantily clad woman. She's gone for a little bit. We're moving along. Still going here, moving along. Once again, the lines are evenly spaced. We see a big jump there. It's about the, uh, the two-minute mark, and that's where the scantily clad woman gets the laser, and her friend shows up, I think. Keep moving along. Basically, you can tell by the graph that you're looking at that um, the females in our audience had a little more of a problem with it than our males did. In fact, I don't think our males even moved, our sl moved the slider from the, uh, from the zero point. And if we take a quick peek here, I can just pull my computer back. We're going to ask, we asked our audience um, right after the, the video what they thought of it. And if I can pull that up very quickly. Out of the 17 people in our audience who looked at the video, 59% said yes, they would play it. 41% said no, they would not play it. Now let's break that down into the males in our audience. Of the eight males in our audience, 88% of them said they would play it. 13% of them said they wouldn't play it. Now let's break that down alternatively to our female members. Of the nine female members in our audience, 67% said that they would not play that video. So basically this is definitely a male-female kind of thing. Let's go back upstairs now to Kim. Definitely a male-female kind of thing. Let's find out how the Much Music Review Committee thought about that. Sarah, what was the consensus up there? Well, there wasn't really a consensus. It was kind of split. And uh, our floor director, I noticed, nominated this one for our fromage show that plays really cheesy videos on Much Music. Um, this one, obviously, the issue here is sexism, and that is probably one of the most difficult issues that we have here to, to determine. Um, one person's sexism is another person's legitimate erotic sexual celebration, and uh, this one split people. Well, let's find out if that sexism or maybe that imagery is important to a band. We've got two of the members of the Canadian band Sven Galley here. We've got Andy and Dee. Hi, guys. All right. Give us your thoughts on that particular video. Um, what's it, I don't know. Mm -mm. I don't know if I'm objective enough. I, I really found it harmless, to be honest. Um, you, you don't think women would be insulted? Your girlfriend wouldn't be insulted? Um, no, because I really think it's, it's hard to take it seriously. You know, to be really honest, I mean, I don't know. It's pretty obvious that why the girl was in the video, just to dance around naked. It really had nothing to do with the song. But, <laughs> I don't know. D. <laughs> Come on, man, it had a lot to do with the song. Well, what did it have to do with the song? You know what, you go to any club, the kind of fans that follow Vince and follow what goes on with his kind of music, they go to nightclubs, and you go to any nightclub, they're all dressed the same way. So I don't see anything wrong with it, to be totally honest. All right, let's find out how the director actually thought about it. We have the director on the line right now, Peter Kahn. Peter, are you there? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, what do you uh, think so far on the comments? Well, I've been surprised all along that the reaction was so um, negative because uh, what, what uh, people are thinking is sexism, we just thought was sexy. I mean, the girl is beautiful. She has a great body and she looks fantastic. And uh, we thought we were making a comic book character out of her, putting her in this command control tower. Maybe it's not the best role ever done for women, but um, we didn't think it was so objectionable. Now, that is the fifth edit of that particular video, is that correct? Uh, you know, there were quite a few edits done for MTV before they would take it. Uh, I think uh, the edit you have is kind of in between. It's not quite the MTV edit. Well, what was the original cut like? Well, not that much different, really. Well, all right. Is, was there one particular scene that you had well, to take out? 
Uh, MTV objected to all the shots of the of the woman in the first part of the video, and uh, that's what uh, no one really could understand. Really, what the, I mean, there was one shot where she's waving a cape. I don't know if you remember that. They objected to that. Uh, you tell me why. I have no idea. Now, is that woman Vince's wife? Uh, it was his girlfriend uh, at the time. I don't think they're still together. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks for the rock update there, Peter. Okay, we have another phone call. Stay on the line, Peter. We have a phone call from Cheryl in Winnipeg. Cheryl, are you there? Hi, it's Shale. Shale? Yeah. Okay, give us your comments. Okay, um, well, I've seen the video on MTV, and I do see, you know, the sexism in it because of the girl dancing around and everything. But just what I've seen by watching much music and MTV, it seems like, in some senses, there's a double standard because I know you give Lee Aaron videos heavy rotation and in the off her latest album at least there was you know guys half naked dancing around in her videos and you seem to give like Aerosmith Love in an Elevator heavy rotation and I think that video is ten times worse than this one all right thanks for your comments don't forget if you're out there in telephone land we're going to be taking your phone calls so if you want to contact us, we've got the numbers up on the screen. By all means, contact us. We're going to go to commercial break right now. But before we do that, we've got another response from a member of our Quick Tally audience. See you in two minutes. My name is Hans Bergschmidt. I think that if we're going to pull this off the air, we should pull at least half of the uh, car commercials and all the other high-tech commercials off the air because the, the images are, are no different. Go ahead, boner. Don't don't rush into this. We don't need the rejection. Reject you. <laughs> what is he nuts? Pick up the phone. Put the phone down. What do you know? Phone her. Oh, don't do it. The debate continues with new barbecue crispers. Are they barbecue crackers baked with wheat? Or are they barbecue chips made with potato and special seasonings? In original, ranch, white cheddar, and now barbecue crispers. Part chip, part cracker, all snack. All Clarissa wanted for Christmas was a pony. All she wanted for her birthday was a saddle. She never liked boys. They only had two legs. She viewed the fact that no one would let her sleep in the barn as a grave injustice. She did anyway. But then Clarissa did what all girls do. Clarissa, is that you? The new girl. Volkswagen, is that you? When is it time to pose the question? Maybe it's when the phrase, me, myself, and I, is no longer as meaningful as the word us. Love is in the air, and Much Music wants to help you put it on the airwaves with a diamond love letter request. All you have to do is pick up a diamond love letter request at any participating people jewelers, or send your own love letter request to Much Music. Monday through Friday on our daily RSVP show, we will air one diamond love letter request. And all requests aired become eligible to win a $5,000 diamond engagement ring from People's Jewelers. So make July the most romantic month in her summer with a diamond love letter request from Much Music and People's Jewelers. Because a diamond is forever. I never worry too much about images because I've blown about every one that I've had so far. So here, go, here I go again. May sound silly, but it really don't work. Waylon Jennings Ain't singing and talking at Outlaws and Heroes Sunday. Here's how the viewers out there in Canada reacted to the video Sister of Pain by Vince Neil. We've got a bad graph for you. Where is it? It's up there. Here we go. Do you agree with the decision to ban Sister of Pain? Yes, 44%. No, 56%. So 56% of the people out there in Canada watching tonight believe that we should be playing that particular video on Much Music. Now let's see what you think of this one. It's the latest from Ice-T. It's called I Ain't New to This. Don't forget, if you think that Much Music should ban this video, phone in 1-900-273-1111, or you agree with the decision to ban it, 1-900-273-2222, for no, you do not agree. A little bit of background on Ice-T. Last year, he really stirred things up with the song Cop Killer. Although Warner Brothers stood by that particular video, well, the particular song, they parted ways with the release of Ice-T's brand new album. This is the latest video from it. Here we go, Ice-T. Uh, 
things a little slow since Warner put you down. <laughs> Guys look kind of broke. How about a lift? <laughs> The dump drops the ammo. Yeah. Time to get wet with the new style. It's 93 and MC are getting fuck wild. But I ain't a man that's gonna get left with the big zero as a figure. I'm gonna end up with the big thumb. Cause if you don't like one jam, I always got another one different. Specifically, I don't copy, tear up the track if the flow sounds sloppy. Uh, uh, uh. I don't play one game. I bust about a dozen cuts to my LP. None the same. I ain't new to this. I ain't new to this. Ever been new to this. New to this. I ain't new to this. Fool, new to this. Step to me, you catch a left and a right fist. Boom, bang, I drop that slam. When I used to hustle, used to be down with the crack game. When I was young, we used to roll with the street gang. If you want to squab a homeboy, it ain't no thing. I ain't new to this. I ain't new to this. Blow your dome, I hit quick as a pugilist. Uh, ah, what's up? Now your eyes roll. Thought I went soft, cause my records went gold. Sucker. Buster, dude's a punk, suck a mark, fool. Caught you in your eye while you reach for your tool. Now it's mine, and you're blind. Pop, 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 goes the nine. Uh. Yeah. What you this about, friend? Saying I went out, but you ain't never been in. Wise guy, I got R E S P E C T in the industry. That's something that you'll never see. I ain't new to this. I ain't new to this. New to this. I ain't new to this. I ain't new to this. Fool, new to this. Step up, you'll catch a left and a right fist. Catch a left and a right fist. Check, check. I got problems with the press. Caught the punk in traffic. Got the sucker in his neck. Uh, punk reporter tried to diss me. Uh, now the punk reporter is uh, history. Uh, I got to make a break hardcore fast. Take word. I don't fantasize. I don't exaggerate. Just kick correct with the one, two. My check still quick to swing. Take a sucker to the deck. I'm not the brother. You should suck like a sucker. Walk a sucker. Let's give a sucker. You're good sucker. Your posse best to run from my gun. Keep my nine off safety. And eat. Oh, the other one. Yeah, I ain't new to this. I ain't new to this. New to this. I ain't new to this. Fool, new to this. I ain't new to this. Step up, talk to mess. You'll catch a left and a right. Good. Yeah. Step up, talk to mess. You'll catch a left and a right. Good. Step up, talk to mess. You'll catch a left and a right. Good. And you don't stop. And you don't stop. Well, the review committee had a problem with the violence or the intended violence in that particular video there by Ice-T. I'm going to speak to Stan right now. First of all, Stan, how do you feel as a record company president, particularly w with the last year's controversy surrounding Ice-T and Cop Killer, how do you feel as president of a record company that's distributing product that uh, some people interpret as being overtly violent? Well, I, uh, frankly, on this first time I've seen this video, I didn't pr find it particularly violent. Uh I think ICE is just having fun with Warners and the uh, controversy uh, that occurred. And uh, 
you know, on a personal level, obviously there's some things that we put out that, that maybe I'm not comfortable with, but I don't see it uh, as our role to determine what other people should be looking at or, or listening to. I mean, uh, it's very, very difficult to determine what's going to offend uh, uh, the community uh, sitting, sitting when we're listening to music. It, it's a very difficult thing, and I, I'd like to ask the question of everyone here. Uh, what is the community standard for for a country like Canada? Is is it what it, what we accept here in downtown Toronto, or is it what they accept out in Kelowna, BC, or St. John? Let's go to Robert for that. I think Robert might be able to answer that. Robert, what do you think community standards are? Do they differ right across the country? Well, the community standard uh, in Canada, as as uh, determined by the courts, is uh, a national community standard of tolerance. Uh, community standard does not mean whether I personally like something or whether you personally like something. Rather, it is a case of whether all of us or each of us will tolerate somebody else having access to a video or a movie or a film. It is a community standard of tolerance and it is a national standard. All right, well, we'll find out how the national audience voted right after this commercial break, but we got one further comment from our quick tally audience back in two. My name's Steve, I'm from Toronto. I don't think there are any new images in the last three videos that I saw. The first one leaned pretty heavy on River's Edge, the second one was Blade Runner and beer commercials, and the third one could have been any action movie that Ice-T has been in. Our children, well, I don't have any children, but the young people today, and myself included, are living surrounded by these images in media because they're the vocabulary of the media world that we live in. I think our energies would be much better spent rather than trying to prevent these images from getting out, which is like trying to wrap jello in elastic bands. Our energies would be better spent teaching the young people today to interpret these images because they'll be surrounded by them more and more. The generations that come on will be more and more media literate. We can teach them to interpret and appreciate the images that artists are putting out or we can teach them to close their minds to them. Okay. Ooh. Got you something? Hey, thanks. There's a bite out of this. Yeah, I got hungry waiting in line. But, <laughs> I... Look, you don't want it. Oh, but I... It's, you didn't have to get some, you know? It's not that, it's just if you're going to take a bite, then logically... Logical? The only thing as good as your crispy crunch is someone else's. I'm gonna save mine for later. <laughs> <laughs> started songwriting it wasn't to write rock and roll the diversity was just amazing you have to be there at that time to appreciate what it was and when i first met them they really couldn't write a decent song the making of sergeant pepper a much music exclusive monday Let's see how Canada voted on the Ice-T video. Let's go to the bar graph right now. The question was, do you agree with the decision to ban I Ain't New to This from Much Music? 42% said yes, 58% said no. So essentially, in the whole evening, the three videos that we've seen, the majority of people out there in Canada do not agree with the decision to ban these particular videos from the Much Music airwaves. 
Thanks everybody for taking part. Thanks for coming down. Thank you for taking part out there in TV land. Don't forget, stay tuned for another Too Much For Much. It'll be coming up in about four weeks time. Videos, the cutting edge of where it's at with music. Thanks a lot everybody. Good night. Credit. And key. We're going to credit. And music, please. In ten. Roll the music. Nine. And just to let you know Eight. that if you are coming to Toronto and you want to be part of the Quick Tally audience, uh, write to Too Much For Much, care of Paul Gerard, 299 Queen Street, West Toronto, Ontario, M5B, 2Z5. Credit. Roll the credits, please. Ready to dissolve to three? Dissolve to three. Let's get a hotter mix on that music if you can, please. Wait while you're you mixing with the controller of the sound. I'm giving account to Black. Okay, ready Copy one. Take one.